Hey everybody, I am the Gerbil. Welcome back. In today's video, I want to follow up with my most recent video about which of the five Phoenix is probably right for you. I learned a lot in making that video, and I learned, I think, even more from a lot of the comments and conversations I had in Discord with a bunch of people who reached out. And I want to share some of my findings and feedback, uh, and maybe some, not, not, maybe some change of perspective for sure. But um, I, in this video, I want to more specifically focus on modding and turn orders to help you further build the perfect Phoenix Squad for you. Now, my sources are mostly my own, the community. Uh, my own experiences, swaga.gg, and a lot of conversations with some of you all watching this. So keep in mind that these are my recommendations, not the definitive, de facto, perfect situation, because that's what makes this game so great, is that there's a lot of different ways to arrange your squads, how to mod your squads, and how to play your squads based on your speeds and interactions with each other. This is a great game for theory crafting. And so again, these are my recommendations, but I hope that they will work for you. Let's get going. Before we get talking about Phoenix, I wanna give some thank yous and shout outs real quick. Some acknowledgements. I just started a brand new uh, show series with Nooch Too Good. It was an hour long for our first episode and it felt like 10 minutes for me. It was a lot of fun. I hope you all check it out. It is hosted on his channel. Jump over there, subscribe to Nooch Too Good if you haven't. Uh, and, you know, turn this thing on when you're cooking dinner, mowing the yard, jogging, or when you just want to kick back and relax and watch two Star Wars dads chill and talk sw Star Wars and Swaga. Also, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Ukes over at Swagology, who's been hosting a bunch of content creators in a competitive trivia based game. I had my second appearance recently. He just posted that one and it did not not go so well for me that time. And AP Gains, who hosted me on his PPP, PP podcast, as well as Scribe, who uh, we chatted for a long time on his tribe talks. Um, I have really, really been enjoying reaching out to the community. That's why I like this game. In addition to all the fun of the game, I like the community. So thank you uh, to all of these people and thank you to everyone watching right now. I, I, I appreciate it. Whether, you know, um, whether, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I'm not looking per se to grow my channel, but I do feel <clears throat> really kind of special that that so many of you out there have had such nice things to say in response to a lot of my videos i do these for me and for fun and f as a hobby but i also do it to try to help people when they ask questions or like hey what why does this not work or why does this work you know especially over in discord i am i am my channel i have a ask gerbil area and i'm going to start posting weekly videos with the responses to those questions i really like helping people which is why i guess i'm a teacher i like to help anyway <clears throat> There are links down below in the description to all these videos. Check them out. And time is actually almost up on my Discord channel to vote for Relic 8 Nisa. Um, the answer is going to be, yeah, she's going to be Relic 8. And I will share that video or that, yeah, whatever, with another Ewok video very soon where I'm doing some remarkable things, even with Tebow lead with Nisa backup. Also, I would also like to just shout out real quick, if anybody's looking for a guild, I wanna give a big thanks to my guild and the Greater Alliance that they are a part of. Uh, this is for my alt account, not my primary, but my alt. My alt account, as many of you may know, is only about 10 months old. I think I started it last October, making it actually it's 11 months old now, almost. And I rushed straight for Grand Inquisitor with a very, very unique build um, looking at bounty hunters into executor, executrix, which executor, executor, which I almost have, and a whole bunch of rebels for GAC defense. Um, offense with CLS, defense with Mon Mothma, defense with Admiral Radis, and Rogue One. Uh, that is Rogue One, right? Uh, and it has been phenomenal. But the Empire Nemesis Guild in the Scarf Beach Resort Alliance welcomed me in with an account way, way, way below. Uh, what most accounts of that size would take. And they have been absolutely supportive and awesome. And we have been collectively working together to get Reva shards. And I'm gonna ironically have Reva before I unlock hard in Conquest. 
that's just kind of weird anyway they have a lot of guilds um, if you're looking for a good home check them out I have no doubt that they can find a place for you all right let's move on Phoenix basic turn order so my recommended team is team one I actually really like this team one but Again, through talking to many of you, I learned uh, some, I had overlooked a few things, and there is um, some real, real viability with a team two starting with Sabine as your fastest character. I'll explain why in just a second, but if you love the Sabine route, um, you, you're going to still build an amazing Phoenix team, maybe even better than the one I recommend. I, I don't know. I haven't play tested it myself, but I got a lot of people saying that this is the better uh, team to build. So I'm going to talk about how to mod them for this team, and I'm going to talk about the proper speed order that, as I understand from the community. So first, team one. You want Rex to be fastest because his AoE suppressing fire is going to put out as many as 15 enemy debuffs, actually 18 if it's like Geos or a, have a summon character. For each of those debuffs, it's going to apply 5% turn meter to every ally, which means that the rest of the squad immediately is going to jump up ahead of your enemies and you're going to go first because whatever turn meter you had, you just had 75% of their max value and they are going above them. So you're going to lay down the suppressing fire, they're going to be dazed, they're going to have offense down, you're going to pass turn meter. Then Hera, you're going to uh, use her play to strengths on Rex, dropping his cooldown so that he can suppress and fire again as quickly as possible. It's also going to grant him 50% turn meter, which should push him back up to 100%. So he's going to get to go almost immediately again. Chopper's a bit situational. If somebody has like Han Solo has shot first or something, or they have enemy pre-taunts going out there, it depends. But most likely you're gonna use Met, uh, Metal Menace, which will remove those uh, buffs from the target enemy. And then remove 10% turn meter from every enemy for each buff removed. Next, you're gonna have um, Ezra, who again is conditional, but you're probably gonna to wanna to use his special watch and learn, targeting Hera, that's gonna give her 50% or 40% turn meter, or Rex, who at this point should actually already be at 100%, so that Rex goes again. But I generally will put that on Hera because that pulls her back up ahead so that she gets a second turn before the enemies do. And then Kanan, again, situational, but I think what you're gonna to wanna to do likely is total defense, so that he can cleanse and then pass eventual turn meter because what he'll do is he'll give somebody uh, target ally foresight and I forget what the other one is but when that foresight expires on both of them they then the entire Phoenix squad gains 50% turn meter and he gains 100% and then you're basically gonna, gonna want to loop this because those are all specials which means you get the swarm attack situation out of Rex on all of them and you will just demolish a lot of opponents. Speaking of demolish, team two starts with Sabine being the fastest where she uses her AOE demolish ability to stagger every enemy. Why? Well then with Rex coming in right behind it at one speed less or whatever, but all you need is one speed slower. Rex then does his suppressing fire, dazing everybody, passing turn meter to everybody, but stagger says when that enemy has been uh, receives damage and they are staggered they lose all turn meter so you're dropping your entire enemy roster's turn meter down to zero and then when you get to chopper again if there are any enemies with debuffs you're stripping away more turn meter so you're getting out ahead of there what else what else is really nice about this lineup that I had not previously considered so much is that with Sabine staggering um, and then suppressing fire dazing every time the swarm effect triggers which is almost every turn and Zeb assists he will stun them on his basic so if the enemy is dazed exposed or staggered he will stun them on their basic which this of course means that this team it needs a lot of potency. You've got to land the daze, you've got to land the, the stagger, you've got to land the demolish. And I think that this is a reason I don't like this team as much, because whereas you need a mod for some potency, in general I prefer to mod for speed and offense, and it's just I think this comes down to a little bit of play styles and preference. Neither is wrong, and I will actually slightly lean to team two as maybe being the most effective um, offense team for sure, and in terms of de de defense, I'm not sure the AI is going to play that right, properly targeting enemies as needed with either Chopper or uh, Zeb to stun on this basic, and I also don't think that the AI is necessarily going to play hair right, knowing when and where to apply backup plan, Or um, so I think that, that Team 2 is really geared more for offense, Team 1 is geared more for defense, 
But again, I can't wait to hear what you all have to say. Now let's talk about before you mod, you have to know a couple of things. And I've beat this into the ground in my previous video as in terms of what you're getting out of Hera's Territory War Omicron and her leadership, and then out of Rex's uh, Grand Arena Omicron and his unique ability. But suffice it to say here in blue, red, yellow, uh, orangish yellow, phoenix orange, are the net gains you will get in these two game modes from these two characters. These are the big ones to keep in mind. So like 30 speed in Territory War, 50 speed in GAC, which means you don't have to go for 150 bonus speed on everybody or 180. That's a little overkill. You're already gonna have a built-in turn uh, speed advantage. In terms of offense, Hera's Territory War has a really, really cool one that I'm going to talk about in a second, where everybody gains 10% stacking offense for each abil uh, special ability they use. And then, of course, both of these characters are going to effectively in, uh, double your health in GAC or add 50% uh, in Territory War. But let's talk about that stacking offense, because this affects your mods. This absolutely affects how you want to mod a couple characters. So I understood that this was exponential growth, that the first instance is based on your, your starting offense, the second instance is based on your modified one, and that it compounds by stacking. I've had a, a lot of people tell me no, 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 and I've been involved in a lot of debates. What I have not seen is a definitive answer from Capital Games. If anybody has a link to that to confirm 100%, let me know. But I know you could record 20 videos, record the damage, and do the math, but I am not going to do that. Maybe someone out there who's very smart has done that, but that's not going to be me. So I want to say that if stacking is not exponential and that it is additive, which it very well may be, here's how that works. And this is why modding really, really matters. If it's exponential growth, it doesn't really matter as much. After 30 iterations of it, the exponential growth is going to be so significant it doesn't matter. Uh, and this is actually evidence that it may be additive because after 30 instances of it, you're not necessarily, though getting close to, one-shotting most enemies. So turn one, let's say your, your Ezra has 10,000 offense, and then somebody uses a special ability, he gains 10% of that 10,000, that is 1,000. That 1,000, that 10% of your base starting, becomes that 10% additive stack every turn. So every time somebody uses another of special ability, He's gaining not 10% of his current, but 10% of his original. Therefore, he's gaining 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. So it would effectively take 10 instances of Hera's Omicron to trigger when you use a special to double his, uh, to double his offense. It's not as good, obviously, as exponential, but I'll take it. Why does this matter? Because the higher your starting offense, the higher that stacking bonus becomes. If your offense is 1,000, then each instance you're adding 100. If your offense is 10,000, each instance now you're adding 1,000, right? So it does make a compounding difference the farther you go. All right, now let's get into the nitty grittiness of the actual mods. Okay, so at the top of the screen, I've left the, the Rex slash Hera uh, kind of net benefits. Keep in mind, Hera is Territory Wars, Rex is Grand Arena. So I'm not going to go through like their whole kits, but it's listed over here. And I've underlined the things that I think are the key items for considering when modding. Uh, and then also I want to keep in mind the turn orders we set before. So you kind of want to balance these out. Regardless, Hera's main function is truly support. You want her to go fast so that she can apply backup plan whenever it's needed, and you want her to take as many turns as you can so that she reduces the cooldown on that backup plan so that she can apply it again and again to keep your team alive. It's really, really important. Otherwise, her unique, well, it's her unique, and then her basic is just kind of worthless. Don't even worry about her basic. So what do we put on her? Uh, you want her to be, as I said, fast, and you want her to survive. So that basically comes down to speed and health. Why health? Because her her unique gives her 50% health, and in Grand Arena, uh, Rex is gonna give them 100% bonus health. So the more health they have, the more health they're gonna get 
Also, there's a lot of opportunities to gain bonus protection up, which is based on your health, not your protection. So again, the more health you have, the more protection up you will receive. So for Hera, the primaries, I recommend a speed on the arrow and then health across the board. All right, next we're gonna talk about Rex. Rex, Rex, Rex. Rex is, um, Rex is rather tricky. There are many ways you can mod him. My primary recommendation is a triple potency set, alternatively health and still potency. Uh, the arrow, I recommend speed because you do want him to go fast. He either needs to be the fastest on the team or second fastest if you are pairing him up with Sabine. As far as the triangle goes, crit chance, but not a crit chance primary do, or, um, air, um, set. I would not, not, not run a crit chance set on him because there are many ways ways to gain critical chance up across the team and um, but it definitely has a, a place in his kit where he wants it in particular on his basic, which he will be using a lot. It says, um, it says uh, whenever this attack scores a critical hit, dispel all debuffs on Rex or a random clone trooper or Phoenix ally. So it's not exactly like game changing uh, because there are other ways to dispel himself and the team depending like if you're running um, uh, Ezra or a couple people can dispel so it's not super super critical but it, it is quite useful. What is more important, 100% more important, is that he lands his debuffs. That on his suppressing fire, he lands the days. He lands the offense down, and there's a third one in there. I'm looking for it, and I'm not seeing it. Um, tenacity down, right. So those, those debuffs are resistible. It does say that... Um, it says that uh, on all enemies, deal physical damage to all enemies and inflict offense down. Uh, they gain 5% turn meter for each of them and all allies gain. Yeah, so see, notice it does not say that these abilities are not, or these debuffs are not unavoidable or unresistible or whatever. So you need to have a high potency so that those land. And they, they need to land, obviously, to trigger Sabine's stagger if she goes first. They also need to land uh, so that Zeb can uh, stun them if he assists. And of course, they need to land because each one that is applied grants 5% turn meter to the entire team. So you have an opportunity for 15 debuffs right off the get-go, which is 75% turn meter. If those don't land, you don't get it. And of course, who doesn't want to daze an enemy? It's one of the best debuffs in the game. So it's critical that he gets that. Um, case in point, my Rex is pushing 154 bonus speed, I think, through mods. And I have a triple potency set on there. Some of my other characters are not fully modded as I recommend because they are legacy from pre-Rex era and I am slowly changing them as I go. Nonetheless, Potency, 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 potency. Secondaries, I recommend, again, speed potency, but some health to get all those benefits. Also because he has a mechanic in there to recover 15% health and protection. And again, you get max health out of uh, his and Hera's kits. Chopper, I think, is, a, is just a 100% necessity in any iteration of a Phoenix squad. If you're not running Chopper, uh, this is a rare moment where I think I'm going to go ahead and say you're wrong. You need to have Chopper. I almost never will say that because that's what makes the game fun is the diversity. But I think Chopper is a must have. Most of his kit revolves around one thing, surviving or um, taking away enemy turn meter, which is pretty cool. Uh, as far as I understand, dispelling buffs, which is what his metal menace does and what Ezra's second first special does, Removing or dispelling does not require potency. I don't think that there's a potency check on a dispel. I think it's just automatic. It happens. So um, don't think potency is super important from him. I did underline, like, if you're going up against a lot of Grievous squads for some reason or sorty droids, then there is a line in there where potency matters. But for the most part, the only thing that matters in his kit is health. Lots and lots of health. It's even debatable to me whether to put health on this on the arrow. I still go with speed because I think he needs to have speed, but while he is a support character overall, you kind of want to think of him as a tank. He's going to taunt, he's going to dispel enemies, he's going to assist a lot, and you need him to, uh, you want people to attack him, honestly, because he's got a high evasion rate, and anytime he evades an attack, he's going to gain uh, turn meter, which is going to increase his, uh, 
you know, the number of turns he takes so that he can take his specials more and more and more. Again, Rex Swarm Assault. So treat him like a tank, mod him for health and speed, a fast tank. Think Bosk. Mod him like that. Yeah, except potency is not really needed. Kanan, oh, one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. Um, just straight up health. I mean, like guys, that's all I'm going to say about it, guys and girls. Just straight up health. The more health, the better. I would even go health arrow, health triangle, health cross, health circle. He's going to get turn meter from a lot of sources. Uh, in addition to that, he's going to give himself 100% turn meter when the conditions are met for his total defense, and he's going to give the entire team 50% turn meter. His unique is another reason why you want health across the entire squad. It says that um, he recovers 25% health whenever he suffers a debuff. So the more health he has, the harder he is to kill. I mean, you daze him, there's 25% health. You, you offense down, there's 25% up. Potency down, which doesn't matter on him, 25% health. So go health. Ezra, my boy, Ezra. Um, straight up offense. Like, in my opinion, just my humble opinion, just straight up offense. Crit damage is good. When I say offense, I kind of lump those two together. But I do think offense is better than the crit damage mod sets. Why? Because it goes back to the stacking offense. The higher that number, the more net damage he's going to gain every iteration. Now, there is some math, yes, at some point that the crit damage does by surpass the difference you're going to get. Um, and it depends, again, on how you mod them, what your base value sets are. So like Sabine's unique, there is a point at which her 25% bonus crit damage is greater than Ezra's 40% max stacking offense that he gives himself and the team. But that's only in Territory Wars. So in GAC, you probably want to go with offense, 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 and get the most out of uh, whatever you want. But then again, Harris stacking offense is only Territory Wars. So mm, tough call, but I would go offense without a doubt. Next up, we got our, our Sabine, who, uh, spoiler alert, is in the new show. And if you didn't know that, then where have you been? You don't need to watch it to know that. She's in the trailers all over. Okay, so she's an attacker, yes, and her call to fame in this squad is that demolish, that applying stagger everywhere, but then having Rex go across the board, pew, 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 and bye-bye turn meter. So that means you want her to be fast. She has to be faster than Rex, but I actually don't recommend speed sets on her similar to Rex. I recommend all potency sets with Sabine. I recommend offense or crit damage, and then crit chance because there is um, there is a need for her to crit. That demolish, it says that um, if the attack scores a critical hit, reduce Sabine's cooldowns by two. Now her base critical chance is quite low, I mean, you should land one no matter what on an AOE, but not if there's only one or two enemies left. It can be challenging to get that crit sometimes. So I think a crit chance arrow and a crit chance triangle is is really worth it because that demolish is, the, is, is what makes her the most effective. So instead of a cooldown of five, you really want that to be a cooldown of three. And then of course, if you use Hera's uh, special, you can drop that to a cooldown of two, which means you can start applying it every other turn. And that, my friends, is really really, really nice. On the cross, I would 100% put potency so that you land that stagger, you land the exposes and everything else, because similarly, the last sentence in, in Demolish, it says this attack can't be countered or evaded. It does not say that it cannot be resisted. It can definitely be resisted. So she wants potency. Also, armor shred. I don't know if armor shred, I underlined it in green. I don't know. Someone let me know, but I don't, I don't know if armor shred can be resisted or not. I think it can. Again, if it can, potency is important. Finally, this brings up our boy Zeb. Wow, he's the tank who never feels like a tank to me. Um, Zeb, his kid is a bit trickier. He's got a lot of shout outs to health. He is technically a tank. And, and while I have never been able to get any damage output from him, several people said, actually, no, you can. He hits really, really hard as he should, as he should. I mean, considering his species, he's all muscle. That boy should be able to pummel. Uh, so I'm, I'm not 100% confident on these modern recommendations, but just from breaking down the kit and thinking of the interactions of where they're going and the bonuses you're already getting from the leadership Omicrons, I feel that the places that he benefits the most from modding is a double potency and a health set so that he lands that day, so he lands the stun. 
um, on his basic so that he can stagger them with his special. But then offense be, uh, on the like the triangle or maybe even the arrow on the speed be, instead of speed because there is a way for him to compound a lot of extra damage. There's this line in there that it does an extra 20% damage of the enemy's max health, but that doesn't matter on his. But there's another line in there uh, that says that it does an extra 50% critical damage. And there's something else I'm missing right offhand. I can't remember, but there's more conditions. This is why I don't like Zab a whole lot because the kit is kind of conditional. If this, then that. If this, then that. Some people love that. For me, it's I struggle to remember all these different character kits throughout the game and all their different iterations. So I think potency, I think health, I think offense, I think you're not going to go wrong with any of those uh, and probably any variation of them. But I do think potency, again, uh, my guildmate Kermon is going to love that. Potency, I think, is most important for a lot of this squad, especially if you're going with Team 2 Sabine. You need potency on her, you need potency on Rex, you need potency on Zeb. If you're going for Team 1 Rex, you want potency on him, and the rest can be basically health and offense, which most people have more health mods, which probably is another reason I like Team 1. I think for most people, especially early gamers, uh, people in their mid to early game, they're going to be able to mod the Team 1 a lot easier. Late game, I think my team two might be better in the long run, late game. But again, that means you gotta gear up all seven Phoenix team squad members. And that's something I was trying to avoid in the last video I posted. You know, who's the best five of seven? Uh, starting out mid game, I'd still stick with team one. Late game, when you got all those resources to spend and throw away, team two is probably better, again, on offense. Team one, probably better on defense. Anyway, I'm the Gerbil. I hope this helped. Hope you like this. If so, give me that like and subscribe, please. Please, please. I appreciate it. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.